So I'm sat here in the bar and just putting my notes together to what to pack to go to Nunavut. I've got just less than a week before I fly back to Canada and I don't have any air tickets yet for Nunavut. So how much time I've got to spend in Canada, I don't know. And I've always kind of thought that this is a little bit of a... Um, it's a bit of a frustrating time, but it's also a little bit of a, a complicated time where I'm going back to Vancouver and I've got bags to pack, I've got my car to sort out and then I've got to move thousands of miles across country, and thousands of miles up north and then uh, next, next chapter of the adventure begins. So on one hand it's quite exciting and I am really excited about this, don't get me wrong, uh, but the other, it's always that packing part and that uh, transfer. So I've got to literally get myself from Bridlington back to Vancouver to either Winnipeg, Ottawa or wherever they send me and then a flight up north on a baked bean can with two engines. So with all this, all this stuff. I think I'll just drink my beer and watch the sea. <laughs> Cheers. This is kind of the best part of the trip. Um, it kind of settled, you know you're going home, you know the airplane's out there, and the kind of risk of missing the airplane just goes away. You sit here, have your breakfast, watch the world go by a bit. This is another airport where they've obviously got too many flights coming in, too many people, airport's too small and they can't cope. gets on with the baby and sits right so fingers crossed but it's looking reasonably good
to normal work. So got, <coughs> got the emails on when we went to Harrison filming this drone footage and yeah, yeah. Uh, the stuff I shot today. So I actually got the email come through today, but I couldn't open it because I didn't take my glasses with me and I just got it on my phone <laughs> and I couldn't actually open up the document and actually read it. So I just kind of tossed it back into my backpack and thought I'd read it later. So I got back to Chilliwack, put my glasses on and opened up the, um, opened up the email. I'm actually flying at 10 to 9 in the morning. So what that means is I've got to actually physically pack and you all know how much I ate packing and I've done a lot of packing over the last kind of month. So I'm down to the last probably 10% of my packing which is the hardest bit because it's my carry-on cameras and all that kind of stuff. So I've got to actually get everything packed up, make sure that I'm not leaving any mess or anything for anybody else to pick up. <laughs> the lovely housekeeper here. Who, got to, who I've got to pick up my underpants and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Not like leave any under the bed or anything. <laughs> and then get in the taxi. And no one unmentionables are laying around. And then get in a taxi at 10 to 4 tomorrow and start making my way in to the, the morning. Hour. Yeah, in Before the morning. Before the sun comes up. Before the sun comes up. When the moon well, is still up. No. Well, maybe no, not. No, no. But one of the interesting things is, and you've got to kind of look to the spirit of adventure and all that kind of stuff, is I'm going to Winnipeg. And I've got a um, land tomorrow, but then I've got a free day in Winnipeg before I fly up to the island that I can't pronounce that um, I'm working. So this is quite interesting for me because my great, 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 great grandfather, great grandfather, he was uh, a navvy on the Canadian Pacific Railway. And he left, as the story kind of myth goes, it's lost into family history. He left school at 14, went back to his mum and said, look, I'm going to Canada because he's, he's found a deal on the back of the newspaper where he can get there free. <laughs> so he went to Canada and he, um, he started up as a navvy on the Canadian Pacific Railway as they was digging it west. So he got as far as Winnipeg, allegedly, and then he bought a farm in downtown Winnipeg and there he settled down until sometime around 1939 where the best planning in the world uh, he decided to go back to England at the best best time. You couldn't have gone in a better time, could you? No, no better time. Yeah. Let's go back to England in 1939. Bombs <laughs> are falling, war is going hell, blah, blah, blah. Yes, so he went back and settled down in England. But the interesting thing is, is I'm kind of the first Elwick descendant that I know of that's uh, visiting Winnipeg. So it feels like, it feels quite, quite weird, like I'm stepping back in history, sort of stepping in my grandfather's shoes. So. A bit like a pilgrimage. A bit like a pilgrimage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. Check out the answers. Um, it's a bit hectic, but everything will kind of smooth out like it always does, and then probably get down to the airport tomorrow and do what I normally do, shoot endless bloody footage in an airport and constant moaning and then get on the plane and go to Winnipeg and okay so I'll see you what time, to say. what time am I getting up you're getting up at 4 3 50 in the morning I'll see which you is through. about two hours before the roosters get up cockadoodle do okay yeah, exactly so well, here's the steam yes so I'll see you at 3 50 in the morning and the journey continues and cheers to my good cheers. friends cheers. cheers thank you so much for putting it in there. Oh, no problem. It's lovely having you. At least you stay awake in the evening. What? Men are from Mars, women from Venus. Yeah, you figured it out. <laughs> Need to buy that book. <laughs>